Hello and welcome back to JVCTR. For those that are new, my name is Johnny and today we're reviewing a dash cam, specifically the Mio 792 Wi-Fi Pro. Now, in the interest of clarity, uh, this product has been sent in to me by Mio in exchange for a fair and honest review. There is in no way an incentive for this to be positive, so today I aim to give you my honest feedback and thoughts on the product. Now, this is quite an interesting product for me, so I am a Nextbase user, as I'm sure you are aware if you've seen my other Nextbase videos. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what the competition has in store. Now, the one thing I would say is that having done a bit of research into Mio um, as a company on the whole, really, I can see that they actually have quite a large following. Now, that doesn't happen if you're shipping out crap products. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be interesting, especially as it has quite a few headline features. So, without further ado, let's get into the review. Such cringe. Anyway, the 792 comes with a Starvis CMOS sensor, which Mio claim is brilliant in low light, filming full HD at 60 frames per second where possible. It has built-in GPS and Wi-Fi like many dash cams nowadays, but also boasts some funky features. The 792 claims to have a forward collision warning system, a lane departure warning system, fatigue alert, and a headlight warning system. It can also accommodate a rear view camera and a tire pressure warning system, although these are available at an additional cost. Now, in terms of finding out if those features are actually any good, um, I guess we better get into the box. So, um, we're opening this box. Spoiler alert, I have already opened it. Um, it's actually quite nicely presented. Now, you get a little cover here, which they throw in for whatever reason. Um, and then you're presented with the dash cam itself. Now, Initially, it seems to be quite weighty for the size of the camera itself. Um, and you can see it seems to be particularly well built. Um, the buttons all feel very solid. None of them seem to be particularly flimsy, um, although there is a lack of a touchscreen. More on that a bit later. Next up in the box, uh, a bit further down, uh, you get the windscreen mount, which is just a suction cup. We'll have a look into that when we put it into the car. Um, and then lastly, uh, your charging cable, um, yeah, if you need one of those. Uh, you can also hardwire these, of course, but that comes as an additional cost and is also a bit of an effort. But if you fancy seeing how you hardwire a dash cam, I've done a video on that. I'll pop a link up to the description up there. So yeah, that is pretty much what you get in the box. Let's get it in the car. Now, as my driveway is on a massive hill, um, doing camera stuff like this is a whole of a lot easier on a flat surface. So I've come down to my favorite woods. Now, in terms of installing this thing, uh, the easiest way would be to use the included cigarette plug lighter socket thing, um, and then plug it straight in, stick it on the windscreen. I mean, installation is as easy as that really. Um, just whilst I've got this in my hand, I would say that in terms of cables, it actually seems to be very, very well built. You normally just get sort of cheapy cheapy rubbish associated with tech nowadays, but this one seems to be quite good. Um, but today, we're not using that. Um, I have already hardwired in a Nextbase dash cam, which thankfully uses the same plug. So uh, today, it's just a case of unplugging my Nextbase and then plugging in the new Mio. Um, the only thing I would say is that the Mio comes with a, a suction mount. Um, Nextbase did have the option of having a sticky mount, which is a, a nice to have, but at the end of the world, we'll, uh, we'll use the, su the suction mount for today. So there you have it, that is the Mio dash cam installed, as easy as that really. Um, again, if you want to learn how to hardwire this, I have also done a video on hardwiring a dash cam, so feel free to check that out. But for now, we're going to go for a drive, uh, I'll leave it in for maybe a week or so and uh, I'll come back to you with my thoughts.
Now, one of the first things I noticed is that none of the features seem to be working. And to my surprise, the device was shipped with them all turned off by default. So I went through the menus and I turned them all back on before going for a drive. The first thing I noticed was that the lane departure warning system was particularly sensitive, especially when on a country lane. The forward collision warning system was reasonably effective however, and I only managed to activate it once on camera, which I guess is a good thing. Now when it comes to the dashcam footage, I can't say that it's anything to write home about, but it does provide quality that's more than good enough for what is required. As you can see here, low light performance isn't bad and daytime performance works well. But I must admit, I was expecting better. So I delved into the menus again and lo and behold, the device had been shipped set to 30 frames per second and not 60 frames per second. Now I'm not sure if this would improve the quality, but it was worth a try. Now this footage was recorded with the new settings at 60 frames per second, the difference isn't drastic, but the raw footage is a whole lot smoother. I'm not sure if it would be obvious here as the whole video is rendered at 30 frames per second. But that said, the low light performance is still really quite good, which is surprising considering the shutter speed is halved at this frame rate. Now, when it comes to using the Wi-Fi to view and download your footage, it's really quite easy to hook your phone up to the camera. Simply turn on the Wi-Fi, which will display details of the network, and connect your phone to that network. The only point worth noting here is that you cannot change the network name and password, which some may seem as a slight security risk. But that said, it's not connected to the internet, so the risk is minimal. Once connected, it's just a case of opening the MyView Pro app. You can use the app to view the live view, which is a little slow to connect, but works reasonably well once connected, as demonstrated by me. And downloading files is as simple as selecting the file you'd like to download and hitting the download button. However, be warned, this process is so slow, meaning that unless you are desperate to get the footage at the roadside, for example, you're better off plugging your SD card into your computer and dragging and dropping the footage off the card. Another useful feature for the roadside is the ability to use the camera to take photos. The quality is pretty much the same as the video, but if you need to take pictures when out and about, say perhaps you witnessed an accident or something similar, then the camera is easy enough to grab and start snapping away. And by far and away, my favourite feature of the 792 is the speed camera feature. Now, in my experience with the camera, it's been incredibly accurate. It gives you a little warning to tell you one's coming up. It shows you your current speed on the screen, what speed you should be doing, and then it you know, bings once it's gone past as well. I have no idea what happens if you're exceeding the speed limit, but actually, in my experience, it's been rather good. So overall, the 792 dash cam is pretty solid for, for being a dash cam, and it does dash cam stuff marvelously. I think the pitch quality is all right. I mean, it's, it's good enough, um, but the real party piece for this is all those additional features. So particularly for those of you who've got a slightly older car, should we say, um, the features included in it here are normally standard on like the newer cars and the more expensive cars, but this is a really, really simple solution to getting some pretty decent features in an older car. And I think with the data available to the camera, i.e. the camera itself, GPS and the G-sensors, all those features actually work really well considering they're not built into the car, they don't have like a radar sensor or anything like that. It works well. So. Yeah, overall, um, I think it's a solid package. I, uh, I quite like the little Mio, and for me, it's a keeper. So, with that, um, if you enjoyed this review, found it helpful, feel free to subscribe, and I'll catch you in my next video. I, I, I,